All right, so welcome to the vlog. Now. Welcome to the vlog. Good morning, everybody. All right, so in today's video, we're getting all the equipment ready to go. We've got to get the leaf blowers on, the debris loader on, warm up the U-mount, make sure everything's rocking and rolling. We're gonna transition to doing leaves, all right? So we're in this kind of like awkward week, week and a half. Uh, we're not mowing, we're not doing leaves, and it's not snowing yet, okay? so. We just got a couple days off to where we're just getting everything ready to go. So today we're getting the leaf blower, put it back on the Toro. It's done for mowing. We're gonna get the uh, Ballard razor, I'm sorry, ripper blades on here. We got the X mark. We're gonna get those blades on those as well. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Good morning, Mr. Rob. Good morning. How are we doing today? It's good seeing you. I'm doing good. Quite yep. sore. <laughs> well, yesterday you did a whole pruning job with yep. uh, our guy Chaz. Yep, and I went oh. out with someone else and uh, <laughs> got my butt beat. <laughs> well, you did some uh, some honest landscaping, right? You did uh, yeah pruning, some shrub tear outs. Pruning, yeah, some shrubs, some uh, shrub stumps I had to pickaxe out of the ground, and that was fun. Yeah. This guy is all, all sore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's all sore. I'm like, welcome to the other side, man. There's mowing and there's landscaping. And landscaping is definitely uh, fun and hard, but yeah. but it is nice too because it does change it up. So, all right, well, let's keep it going. We're going to put the uh, leaf blowers on, get the u man out. Hopefully, it'll be up here for an hour and then go do this other video for an hour or two. And uh, we'll see where this uh, day goes. Great. Yesterday, I got Chaz. You got Chaz laughing? Yeah. Why is that? Because yeah, I'm over there pickaxing this. The you know the shrubs out of the ground. Yeah. He's over there just cutting away with his little I, I don't know what it's called saws all like chainsaw. Yeah. Just cutting away the bushes. It looks like he's having a relaxing time. I'm over there dying, you know, <laughs> sweating, breathing heavily. And I look over at him. I'm like, hey, Snow White, where's the other dwarfs? <laughs> I'm not like having fun by myself here. <laughs> it got him going for a second. Uh, well, you know, putting in all that effort, all that work, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're used to carrying the team because I'm always uh, filming videos and on my phone, right? Speaking. <laughs> cool. All right. So here is the U Mount Leaf Floor. Um, and this one, they have a new version, well, a prototype version that's like basically twice the size twice the uh air cfm and mouse per hour you might have saw that on a vlog we just dropped a day or two ago the what's new from GIE video so this is our in between so of course billy goat has that p2000 which is kind of like they're in between uh i didn't necessarily want to drop 13 grand on a uh, hurricane z3k or x3k so this was kind of our happy medium i think this was like i don't even know how much i paid for this 3500 bucks maybe 4000 uh this was last year fall it actually helped us a lot with our bigger properties you got a leaf stuck in there. Hey, yeah. can you get it? Can you get it? There you go. Got it. All right, so we are on the hunt for the U-mount mount. Uh, that's not it. That's the hyper hitch. This is for the Billy Goat, which we're gonna we need. We need this bag, anyways. We're gonna need. Oh yeah, everything's buried in here. It's gonna be exciting. Yep. Okay. So is it in the? Well, my is it? I don't know. We're gonna have to pull everything out. Yeah. Here we go. All right, so it's a few minutes later and we are getting the U-mount hooked up. So this is all new to us, we're trying. We're gonna put the U-mount on the multi-force and that way we can also take this thing on and off if we don't need it and put it on the cart. Where's the cart? Oh, the cart's right here, duh. Well, we normally leave the cart strapped down uh, inside the enclosed trailer. Uh, so this is the black spanner that we would basically use u-bolts to the casters of a mower can you throw that up there really quick rob like just to show an example of what we're talking about um yeah maybe on this mower so this is where we had it last year and it was fine it was cool everything worked out um but you know what one thing was that we couldn't use the jack though unfortunately to change the blades out not a big deal so instead what we're going to do is just have this uh as our go-to on the multi-force so we'll have the leaf blower and the bagger. So let's see if that mounts on there.
it went up for a second and then did I it move tried, up though it moved like when i first started it when i first pressed it up i realized i was going up and then i tried to go down and didn't do anything electrical time all right so you guys are seeing real time the uh, switches are working on the multi-force i'm not sure why it's it's rocking weird like it's clicking really weird um this switch is definitely working because we can hear the hydro is trying to cycle but i'm not very good with electrical but let's open it up and see what the heck is going on this is all the stuff that uh people doesn't think happens to us like the the small equipment bull crap and the downtime and Hey, we have issues, little stupid issues just like this all the time too, you know. You're going to rewire, you're going to hot, hotwire my uh, multi-force. <laughs> you actually made a really good comment. You said it'd be cool if the, what did you say, Rob? The uh, If they were able to make it so, because our problem right now that we've been figuring out is using the pedals on the U-mount to change the direction of the actual nozzle. Right. Because on here, it's going to be kind of hard on an actual stand-on mower. Yeah. I was just saying it would be cool if they made it so it would work with this, because since we already have a left and right on here, yeah. just make it somehow it's able to connect to that, that so then changes that. We bought the left-right foot pedal design. They have a handheld one. Load it, load it, load it. About to avoid some more, please. Oh, I see a nut just fell right here. Yeah. Um, I gotta put the camera down. Alright, so we are trying to test these out to see what is going on with the little switch. Something's definitely acting up from the top down, from like the actual switch. Yeah. See how it's like, it's not rocking correctly? Yeah. Like it just sounds weird. Something... I think, yeah, there might be something inside the switch that's... Yeah, I don't know, what is that? Alright, so it's a few minutes later. We're just trying to see if the left right can now be our up and down <laughs> yep. we don't need to turn anything today or this next week we can do our leaves and then uh they can warranty this out or fix it or whatever it is for snow and um rob took a photo of this schematic right here on his phone which is yes. dope and uh i was my resident electrician so you're doing electrical work you just didn't know it'd be on lawnmowers yep <laughs> Uh, this will be the moment of truth. If this works, this works. If this works, that'd be something else. Oh no way, dude! No way. Is it not coming up though? Well, you got it to go down. I just don't think it's cycling up. Yeah. Well, at least you got it to go down. That works. Well, it makes it easier for us to get this on right now, I guess. Jeez. Anything, well, that actually solved like a lot of the problem. Now it's at least flat. Yeah. Jeez, old pates. Well, Looks that's. Like we might just need to get a new control. Yeah, that's that's going to Mark's outdoor, and we need to get that warranted out. I don't know what is going on with that. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Yes. That works, man, that works. This could actually be a pretty dope setup with the nozzle being pretty close to the ground there. That actually works out. Yeah, and then it'll be nice if we can get it to raise up and down so we can get the clearance if we need it. Yeah, going over curbs or something, you know? We'll get that module uh, warranted out. Maybe we'll run up to Marks or something and get that figured out. In the meantime, we'll just leave it there for now, you know, what are you gonna do? All right, another couple minutes later here, and uh, this is what we're doing, man. We're going to put this up here. Uh, it just kind of fits for the U-mount, you know what I mean? So that way, if you need to go left, right, left, right. <laughs> it's such a ghetto rig setup, <laughs> but it's already looking pretty good. I don't care. We're going to send it, and uh, the leaves, man, you just do it the best you can. It's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of a lot of back and forth, but there you go. who cares? Actually oh, there you go. All right, so one other thing that Rob and I were just talking about is we've got the Ballard X-Blade bracket on order. We're not going to be able to do that today, unfortunately. By the way, look at little ladybug here. Little 
ladybug. It was zipping around. I've seen so many ladybugs the last couple days. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's been crazy. Uh, 55 degrees, I'll come back out and get some food. So we'll get the X-Blade uh, set up here next week. And that's the cool thing about this U-mount. You can just take it on and off that uh, hitch and receiver, the little uh, copper piece there or whatever it is, and a uh, brass piece there. And we can just change that out next week before we do start our leaf cleanups and get the X-Blade set up on the uh, multi-force. That way, it just literally is going to reduce so many leaves. Do we want to put the bag around here? Or do we want to just leave the bag around the Ultra uh, Vac uh, for the X-Mark? And then that one could be just a mulching mower. It might not be a bad thought either. Yeah. Probably wouldn't be. I mean, I don't know. Would Are we able to get both we baggers could... on and get it in the... In the trailer? Yeah. That's a good question. With the U-mount? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I can't remember if we had all, all that done. That's a good so, question. Last year. Checking the gas. It should be. I'm pretty sure I added some uh, stabilizer to it uh, last time. So, all right. I think our fuel is. <laughs> we left it on. All right. So now fuel is on. Let's choke. Left this on. Yeah, all right. Definitely. We'll find out. You want to give her the crank? Good. Up front. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Here wiping all the excess bacon grease off the U, no, not the U mount, the uh, Billy Goat uh, stand. This is actually made from uh, Wine Guards Custom Fab. The, by the way, the bacon grease joke was yours. <laughs> uh, that is so true and accurate. Uh, that was the what was that? That was the stable. Uh, that was one of the stable products. I forget which one we put on there to help it with the grease and uh, making sure that things don't rust in the off season. And so this right here is going to mount on the trailer tongue and then we're going to have uh, the billy goat debris loader on top of that here in just a minute uh, on the other side. Gosh, that looks good yeah nice all right, so Rob is moving the P2000. We got to get the Billy Goat there in the corner. You guys know Mark. What's up, bro? What's up? How we doing? Pretty good. So Mark's actually on lunch, and uh, he's swinging over really quick. So taking this thing down was actually not that big of a deal. Uh, Rob already put the new frame back on, uh, so we're good to go here. But to lift the Billy Goat back on top, it's kind of a three-person job, or if you got a tractor or something like that. So anyway, let's get over here. Just get one in. I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> Maybe a four person job next year. <laughs> Robin, I took this no. thing down with two people. But... Next year, I'll just bring my forklift. Oh, see, so if you have a tractor or a forklift, <laughs> yeah, dude. You hit it to me with the nut on it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting them lineman skills going with the gloves on. Oh, uh, you got it, Mark? These are the, fr the front or the back, or they're all the same? Uh, they're all four, let's see. All right, I gotta, uh, I have to bring this thing forward a little bit. Um, oh, 
not hold it. Wait, that was actually good. That, yeah, it was literally right there. It's perfect. That's what I was saying, because I got these holes. I was going to say, this little hole just lined up when he did that. You should be fine. You don't want to. Yeah, I think we're good now. Dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. For real. All right, Mark is out of here, and we are going to do a cold start. Do you think it's going to start up? Hopefully. Find out. Turn All right. on the gas. There you go. It's right there. You can hear it. All right, we're going to try again with the X Smart. Uh, the NOCO battery charger died. Do you uh, want to turn it on? Is it good to go? So we're actually going to give the Billy Goat a quick break here, let it breathe. We think we flooded it. Uh, we're going to put the UltraVac on the Xmark Laser Z. Uh, Rob's getting that all out right now. I'm going to help him out. Let's go check that out. By the way, a lot of you guys uh, are new to the channel, maybe haven't seen. Uh, this is our third storage locker. So we got the Toro Snowblower, the UltraVac, uh, just some other odds and ends, the High Fly, uh, High Fly, High Flow Hydraulics, and then the uh, Boss Straight Blade. All stuff that I'm figuring out how to use to put to work for our business. Uh, we don't have any condos or any large strip malls, but I do want to get this on here. If anything, for our property one day in our driveway, leaf uh, impeller blower for the Z. Uh, but these things are sweet. I see Christian with CNI using these all the time, and I need to get some customers to put these things to work, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so for the X mark for us, guys, we take off our shoe blocker. It's all one piece. Uh, we don't take anything apart with the shoe blocker necessarily, but we do remove the cable. So, Rob, if you want to come in here, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, but this whole piece, uh, actually, I should have uh, wrenched this nut off. Uh, there is a little piece down here with a uh, just a pin that connects it. I need to get a crescent wrench. Did you already have one on here, Robert? Yeah. Oh, all right, there we go. This right here. Actually, I should have loosened this up. Uh, it down. All right, there we go. All right, so now this plate comes off, which. I know that because I've done it before. Uh, and then over here, see this little ring? I don't know if you guys can get in there, but this ring is what we take off. These little keychain rings you get from your oil change place. So this little bracket here just loops through there. There used to be one of the little cotter pins, a little micro cotter pin, uh, but we are going to take this off really quick. All right, so there's your little cotter pin our oil ring, uh, oil change place ring. And so this right here, uh, we normally, what do we do, Rob? Do we just run it through here, I think? Something like this. Normally we electrical tape it or zip tie it. Uh, that'll be fine. We just don't want it to drag on anything like the belt or the pulleys. And then this plate, uh, we can put right back on. And I'm only showing you guys this, not as a know-it-all, but just because nobody ever made YouTube videos back in the day to help me, uh, which is fine. So now we can take this whole piece off. And I used to take the whole assembly off the uh, platform. Uh, don't do that. This is way harder to take off and put back together with all the different washers than it is to do what I just showed you. And anytime you go to an oil change place, I have like four or five of these on my truck key ring. I always save these, these are clutch. They'll come in handy a lot more than you guys think. And then
It's like nothing is working our way today. There we go. And then we just take this whole assembly and put it in the locker. Sure we don't leave our tools anywhere. And this right here, maybe you want to come on this side, Rob. This uh, little uh, double stack pulley is where you run the belt. We want to make sure that we're looped on both of the other pulleys. And so this is the tensioner pulley. You got this little thumb release. Try to do it with gloves so you guys maybe don't get you know your fingers snapped in there. First thing we're gonna do is make sure it's wedged on, like so. Use this to put it on the tensioner, and we're good to go. So it's on all three pulleys, one, two, and three. By the way, those um, impeller auger belts, like 25 bucks, have two or three with you because you get the cold mornings uh, or you get frost or they just they just snap, they just shred, especially all the, the debris because it's kind of exposed. We always have one or two extra in the top of the uh, enclosed trailer cabinets. Whew, sweating today, boy. <laughs> ready She's to ready to go. I'm ready to roll, dude. Like, we're, we're excited about making some money. Huh? Like, leaf cleanup money is like pretty good money when you got the right equipment. It's just transitioning the whole rig to uh, leaf cleanup. It's yeah. the right equipment and when it's actually working. Oh yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, guy behind you over there. Yes. Haven't got that started. The U mount, well, not the U mount, the uh, the multi force switch was acting up. So, like, one little thing is acting up on almost everything, but it's okay. As, Kate, as uh, Caleb Allman says, welcome to contracting, right? Got it! started up we got the billy goat started up i think honestly we just killed it with fuel we flooded it uh and that's not good for a big engine block like this the 18. i know it's a sort of an issue sometimes with the billy goat uh debris loader so this fuel nozzle right here uh, nozzle the uh, the fuel whatever cut off make sure that it's parallel if you want the fuel to run and 90 degrees if you want the fuel to not run so what they suggest and don't don't take my word for it but i'm just saying this is what we hear is turn it 90 degrees that way there's no fuel left in the block when you try to go to start it the next time you end up flooding the engine and you can see right here we got some fuel still kind of as you can see right here there's still some smoke coming off some burned off fuel um i think we just honestly flooded it it happens uh but looking a lot better and i think we're feeling a lot more confident now that this thing is ready to rock and roll for leaves one thing i know is going to be a big question is when are we putting the leaf box on I might try to do that on Sunday after a live event this weekend. Uh, I've got so many boxes to carry over for the live event that I don't want to put the leaf box on just now. We actually need the bed of the truck. So I think we're going to put the box on Sunday or even first thing Monday. I don't know. We're trying to figure that out. It should be a half hour to an hour to put that on, <laughs> right? One of those deals. So I don't think it'll be that big of an issue, but I don't want to put on the box just yet. So Rob is loading up the hurricane right now, putting that inside, and we're going to go shoot a whole separate video on that. Put the tools away and we should be out of here. All right, we're gonna show you guys a little teaser. Here's all the leaves. This is gonna be so much better than last year, bro, when last year was all wet leaves. Oh, yeah. Wet, frozen, matted to the ground leaves. It's been 55 and no rain for almost two weeks now, praise the Lord. Maybe we got all the rain out of the season in uh, September and October, Hopefully. so we don't have any in November, right? But, uh, oh, thank you, sir. 
Wow, that works so much better with the dry leaves. One last thing, this cart, we normally keep it in the corner of the uh, trailer, normally like toe strapped, uh, tied down. That way, not toe strapped, but tied down with the uh, ratchet strap. Uh, that way, if we don't want it on top of the uh, mower, we can just leave it in the trailer so we always have it. Uh, for right now, we'll probably just leave it in the locker. Thanks, dude. Well, we cycled that Kawasaki uh, oil. All right, well, we so we cycled that Kawasaki fuel through there. They're 50 to 1 mix. So check that video out if you guys missed it just a uh, day or two ago or maybe it's a day or two after this vlog. I'll make sure to leave a little card or whatever. And so all of our handheld is winterized and we won't be using that again until uh, arguably in the spring. All right, so everything is all connected. We are ready to rock and roll. We're actually going to go get some lunch, like I said, and shoot that video. But one thing I love about the Rhino Hitch, little plug for them, Brian's 10 works for them is if we needed to adjust the uh, drop at all, it can go up or down. And so now that we added, you know, four or 500 pounds onto the tongue with the billy goat or 250 pounds or whatever it is, sometimes we have to adjust that up. In fact, we did have to adjust it up when it got installed last year. So if it was on like level five, now it's on level four or whatever, or vice versa. So I'm out of breath, bro. Yeah. You did great. Thank you, sir. No Good job. You want to go get some lunch? I all right, we're wrapping up this vlog, guys. Over and out, and I uh, look forward to catch up on the next one. Big thumbs up, and I hope you guys are ready to go tackle leaf cleanups and go make that leaf money. We'll see you guys.